Welcome to GC Cars, my name is Eric and this is the 2022 Lincoln Navigator Reserve. And the Navigator was just refreshed for the 2022 model year with some changes in the interior as well as the exterior, but we've recently reviewed a Cadillac Escalade and to say I liked it is quite the understatement. Can this Navigator take down the full-size crown that I gave to the Escalade or will it fall just short? That's what we're gonna find out today. How about we start talking about the exterior and let's start off with the color because this is pristine white metallic and it is very nice and flaky. I gotta say that. That's a very nice white, very, very pure, not like creamy like some other whites, very white white and we got the flakes on there. Looks very good. The updated headlights I also like. I think the Navigate in general looks very, very elegant. The Escalade kind of goes a bit more for this kind of brawny and muscular look. This is a little more sophisticated. We do though have the monochromatic package, which you will notice is we have literally a white grill and we have some other accents like this on the side where the Navigator badges is all in white. So of course we couldn't go without our 22 inch wheels, which is still, every time I see them on any full size, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty big. Anyhow, <laughs> moving on to the side, this is my least favorite part of the Navigator because compared to an Escalade, we have a longer wheelbase, a little bit shorter overall length, and we're a little taller, which just, I think, skews the proportions a little in an unfavorable way. The back though, especially with the refresh, the new taillights, great. Great looking, great job. We got the Lincoln writing and lettering up top, and then the, the taillight at night, it kind of fades on for you which looks very, very nice. No, honestly, I like it. It kind of offers a nice alternative to the Escalade look, but looks, like I said, a subjective. Interior is not quite so much. So maybe, uh, let's see if it can compete with the Escalade. Let's talk Lincoln and Navigator interior. And I gotta say, Lincoln has done a very, very good job of making a beautiful and crafting a beautiful interior in here. I think this is really nice and design wise. Personally, I do prefer this over the Escalade, although they, they have a different approach. The Escalade with, with it's like 36 or 38 inch like OLED screen array clearly was more like flashy in terms of like technology and all that. This is a little more reserved and it kind of has this yacht feeling with all the, all the wood literally everywhere. But I think this is really, really beautiful. But let's talk about materials. Materials are as you expect very nice all throughout we have leathers we have wood this is very nice obviously but that's that's what you expect when you pay like 100 grand right the seats we got these 30 way adjustable seats they are so comfy you can literally adjust like everything i think they look amazing they are so comfy i love these seats and they are heated cooled and we have massage seats that are probably the best ones i've had yeah beating everything else beating the escalate beating the e-class the e63 we've had uh, because they also have cushion massage but unlike in the e-class and the e-class was a little uncomfortable the cushion massage this one is a little more i don't know less intrusive feeling if you know what i mean this one is more natural feeling so very very nice seats and it's just a very nice place to be in now uh, let's talk a little bit about technology because like i said technology is definitely less of a focus here than it is in for example the escalade we do have our digital gauge cluster up ahead which isn't like super customizable, but we have like a calm screen, which I really like. And then we have this newer, updated, bigger infotainment system with Sync 4. Uh, Sync 4, like I always say, is one of my favorite infotainment systems. It is very easy to use, very intuitive, feature rich, very well integration, uh, very good integration of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I really like this. This works really well. And then we move down here. We have physical controls, so that is nice. Um, I do have a bit of an issue with these volume and like tuning knobs because they do move around a little more than I would want. That's just a little bit of lack of quality here for $114,000. It just could be a little nicer. It's just a little too loose for me. And then we have wireless charger down here. I love these, by the way. It's just so nice. In the wood wireless charger, we have everything you need. Drive mode switch. Once again, we have like a little bit of I know the, the finish wasn't quite applied well on the button because there's some bubbles under that. Once again, a bit, tiny bit of quality lacking. And then our center console is um, obviously humongous. No, this 
This is nice. Uh, lastly, one thing you will notice is this little tracker, this little camera array just in front at the steering wheel, which is tracking my eyes for Lincoln Active Glide, the autonomous system, which we're going to talk about here in a second. And uh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> this is so new. We haven't even peeled off all of the foil. Now we did that. So now a little bit more of the foil got spit in here. <laughs> so, and of course, Happy Meal holder, purse holder, and the Emmy lighting is very disappointing. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Anyhow, overall, pretty good though. Let's take a look at the second row. Just like up in front, easy to get into thanks to the handles and the steps we have on the side of the navigator. And back here, the second row is where the navigator aspect kicks the Escalade's butt, so to say. Uh, the Escalade was nice, don't get me wrong, but this it's just so feature rich for second row passengers. It is really, really nice. But let's start talking about materials. First of all, same leather, metal, and wood mixture like we have in front. So it is very nice, very plush feeling, and is very upscale. And the seats in terms of physical controls are kind of like pretty normal, I guess. You can get them forward, get them backwards, you can recline. So that is pretty much all the usual stuff, right? You can kind of use that. But the cool thing is we do have this optional center console which gives us first of all well the center console who would have guessed <laughs> but what comes with that is this screen and this screen gives us so many features you want to adjust the audio change station or volume well, you can do it right here your climate controls also right here and then we get to the cool stuff with the seats so first of all we have heated and ventilated seats on both sides let's turn the ventilated seats from myself and then we have all the adjustments for our seats so we can you know just the bolstering top middle and bottom we can adjust that as we please but the real cool thing is that the second row passengers get massage as well including cushion massage which is very rare especially in the second row so second row passengers will be incredibly comfortable this is just so nice this is so nice i love this I could ride in here forever. Now let's quickly talk about the third row. So you enter the third row by just pressing a little button on the side, your seat just flips forward and then you can just shove it all the way forward and go back there. And of course it's a full size SUV, it is super spacious and comfy, just like you expected. Is it as nice up in front as in front or in the second row? No, of course not, it's still a third row, but you have cup holes, you have storage and you have your USB slot. And personally at 5.7, I would be comfortable back there for quite a long time. But let's take a look at the trunk and then we finally go drive. Buongiorno. If you ever get kidnapped in one of these, actually this is a pretty comfy headrest, so just so you know. But speaking of the trunk, how much space do we have? Right this, uh, like this with the third row up, we have 20.9 cubic feet of space. About five cubic feet of space less than you get when the with the Escalade. But of course, we can take this down easily. We have buttons right here. We can do it either individually, left or right, but just one button and we get both of them down, and with the third row down, we get 57.5 cubic feet of space. That's about 15 cubic feet less than the Escalade. And then, if you still need more space, well, let's just put down the second row seats. And now we get a whopping 103.4 cubic feet of space. Once again, about 20 cubic feet less than the Escalade gets, but let's, let's be honest here, like, do you really need more? What do, what do you do? And you can still tow, get a trailer. <laughs> this is plenty of room. To get the second row up, we have to go around third row though. It's nice and automatic. And of course we can close the trunk ourselves. And there's one more trick, just like the Escalade has, which is you can open the whole tailgate, this massive one, or you just press the button on the left side and you can just open the window if you just need some quick access. With that being said, let's go driving. Okay, now out on the road here in the 2022 Lincoln Navigator Reserve. And as always, we start off with a launch. So let's put it into Excite to the sport mode. There we go. We're not going to make that mistake we did in the Tahoe and the, and the Escalade where we did a two-wheel drive launch. And let's see how quick she goes. 2,700. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, and break, 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 break. She is 
surprisingly quick. We have a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6 in this uh, navigator, the same we actually have had, have had in the Raptor. I just dropped the EcoBoost nomen, the EcoBoost name for Lincoln. But it's the same engine, we produce 440 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque sent to all four wheels, and that is obviously quite a lot. I mean, she has power. She's got plenty of power, but I think it's like zero to six and like 5.6, 5.7, but it's not really that important. The important thing is you have all the passing power you need at all times. Now this 3.5 liter uh, turbocharger, I, I like it, it's a good engine. I really liked it in the Raptor, but I don't think it is as good as the drivetrain that we've had in the Escalade. So we have the same transmission, it's the same 10 speed, and it's a great transmission, but I did prefer the Escalade's naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8. This twin turbo V6 makes more horsepower and more torque, and is actually quicker than the Escalade, despite weighing 400 pounds more, actually, which is quite a bit, this is over 6,000 pounds. I just, I just liked the driving characteristics of the naturally aspirated V8 in the Escalade, a little more. I think it was more, it was nicer and more luxurious feeling and in both of these you barely hear the engine unless you floor it but when you heard it it just sounded nice in the Escalade. This this V6 doesn't sound that great because turbo just V6 doesn't sound, don't sound that great. If you're idling it has actually quite quite a nice little burble uh, but I just I would just always pick the V8 especially because our fuel economy isn't even really better. It has about the same fuel economy that the Escalade gets. Maybe like it teeny tiny bit better but uh, nothing I would really notice at the pump so uh, but transmission like I said it's the same 10 speed transmission uh, we can do a quick reaction test here so 50 kilometers an hour fast reaction and it goes quickly and we can even shift ourselves if we'd like to seventh gear eighth gear ninth gear tenth gear we can now downshift nine eight seven six five four and it reacts really quickly. Can we go in third? Gives us third, yes. There we go. Fourth and fifth. But in daily driving, which is much more important than what we are doing here right now, uh, this transmission is fantastic. But like I said, I prefer the Escalade's drivetrain. But let's talk a bit about suspension. And this is where I have my biggest complaint about this Navigator. It is not worthy of a $114,000 SUV. It is far off what the Escalade delivers with the with the air ride and the air suspension. This doesn't even come close to that. Unfortunately, bigger bumps and, and all that get absorbed actually really well. But you know those, those sharper little bumps, smaller bumps, so like potholes and, and these tiny speed bumps, not the big ones, like these tiny like things, they, you feel those. You feel those more than you should and more than you do in an Escalade. And I think that is a big part of why this doesn't relax me as much as the Escalade did. If you haven't checked out my Escalade review, I highly recommend that. If you think about it, I'll put that in the top right hand corner for you because I speak about how the Escalade makes me feel better on a much deeper level than most other cars do and more, most, uh, most luxury cars do. And quite frankly, more than this Navigator does. This Navigator is very nice in terms of driving but it's these kind of things like, you know, the drive train isn't quite as good. And especially it's the suspension, that's the biggest fault this has. Don't get me wrong, it's still comfy. But and it, I expect more for the price and for the, for the vehicle we have. Noise is good, noise is good in this, it's quiet. Like you don't really hear much at all. So NVH, noise vibrations, harshness are really, really good in this Navigator. It is very comfy, it is a very nice place to be. But when I was talking about the interior, we talked about tech, right? And that this is a little less techy than the Escalade, but is more, more, you know, more luxurious, more sophisticated, I guess, in that regard. Now, keep hands on the steering wheel. My hands are on the steering wheel, my man. Buddy, I am here. Tech. <laughs> we have quite a bit of driving tech. We have very advanced driving tech in this Navigator. So, of course, we have like blind spot monitoring. We have lanky business and all that yada 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 emergency braking you know that you work know it works well it's great we unfortunately don't have a digital review mirror which i hope we will get at some point next generation as uh, navigator i hope so because that is a great feature especially in these full-size suvs but 
we do have Lincoln's Active Glide, their autonomous driving system. So this actually does hands-free driving and it does it quite often and it's very easy to activate. I used it quite a bit. I used it plenty of scenarios and tried it out and it is a nice system. It is definitely takes quite a bit of work off of you, especially in traffic jams. It's just nice to kind of like, you know, the car does stuff. All you have to do is look. You don't have to have your hands on the steering wheel. Just look ahead, it mirror, like it monitors your eyes. So if you look away, it'll beep at you. It'll stop you in the lane if you don't do anything. But just look ahead and it's good and you can do it. But compared to Super Cruise, it is just not quite there. It is good. It's a good system and I like it. But there were more situations where I had, like when I had the Escalade, I never ever had to intervene with the with the with Super Cruise. This with Active Glide, there were situations where I just got uncomfortable and intervened quite often. And it also snaps out of it more often. If you compare how they drive, I have POV dev test drives about both, uh, where you can actually see the car driving themselves. The the the, the, the Escalade and Super Cruise drives like it knows the road. The navigator drives like it reacts to what it sees immediately in front. So when you have you, know, you have an off ramp and you're in the right lane, it always wants you to take over because it, first of all, it kind of goes into the direction of the off ramp and then it's like, oh no, I want to stay in this lane. And then it's like, oh, take over the wheel. It's like, come on, if, if I have to take back over every wheel, like every off ramp, it's kind of a bit annoying. And sometimes it doesn't want to activate quite as quickly. Super Cruise is just more refined but super cruise also has a few years of experience and development behind it blue cruise is a little newer so i i totally understand that i have no doubt that in a few years time blue cruise will be sorry active glide <laughs> it's what they call it in lincoln and lincoln's will be just as good if not better than super cruise don't get me wrong i know i've said a lot of negatives right now I know, I've, I know I've said a lot of bad things and I maybe criticized and say, oh yeah, the Escalade is better than this, that, that, and those. Don't get me wrong, this is still a very, very good SUV and a fantastic place to be. But I think we're gonna rephrase all what I'm saying and just come to a proper conclusion in the final thoughts. Okay, final thoughts on the 2022 Lincoln Navigator Reserve. And Admittedly, I did throw this Navigator in a bit of an unfair comparison because both Escalades that I've driven, one that I've reviewed and the one that we didn't get to review, were $14,000 and $17,000 respectively more expensive than this fully specced out Navigator. Obviously, you expect them to be a little better. The issue though is that if we speak about $100,000 plus luxury SUVs, value at some point becomes just not that great of a selling point. Does that mean that it's completely negated? No, of course not. There's still a massive difference between $115,000 effectively and $130,000. But if you buy one of these SUVs, you wanna have the best of the best. And the Lincoln Navigator is amazing, but it is not the best. Aspect, this specific Navigator comes out at $114,295 Canadian and I really really like it I think it's a great SUV I think Lincoln done a great job but it's just all these little things that for me personally add up where I say okay I prefer the Escalade now the Navigator I think beats the Escalade in terms of interior hands down I prefer the styling on the inside of the Navigator and the seats are better and it's a very pleasant space to be, but the Escalade features that I really want is the better ride, is the Super Cruise is better, and I like the 6.2 more than the 3.5 twin turbo we have in here. And even when you spec a lower trim Escalade, you can still get those options and have a same price Escalade with those features. Now, admittedly, then the aspect of the interior will be even greater of a benefit for the navigator so once again it kind of comes down to your personal preferences if an interior is all you want and you love massage seats navigator if you want to have something a little more different you know, something that's you know not everyone drives and maybe it's not quite as brazen as an escalate navigator but if you like tech and if you want to have the most refinement out of an american full-size luxury suv the escalate for now at least will be your choice and with that, I wanna thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it in this beautiful 
beautiful summer weather. Um, if you liked it, like I said, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because the more subscribers I have, the more cool cars I can show you. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.